Hey, everybody. Welcome to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. I'm Christy Brower here with my sister, co-host, and partner in crime, Katie <laughs> Weaver. Hey, Katie. Hello. How's it going? Well, I'm good. I'm sunburned to pieces. I, yeah, you are sort of a neon red color right now. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not my lighting. That's really my face. I am sunburned. <laughs> And this is really my place, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we had a softball tournament this weekend and it's in Boise, and it's always the one where everybody gets fried because we're still coming from the tundra, you know. Right. We have not had much sun, and every year this happens. And I told Scott, don't you dare let me leave that house without sunblock on. And he did. This is all his fault. Thanks, Scott. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, his fault. Well, he doesn't burn. Scott doesn't burn. No, and he so shouldn't. he's fine. And I threaten Mars with her life with her teammates because I've seen them fry on the first day and then have a hard time playing on the second day because they're so burned. Right. So I threatened her with everything if she didn't make sure those girls had sunblock on, but I didn't put any on myself. <laughs> and I'm paying for it. Oh, this poor little forehead. This is going to peel. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. I know it's, uh, well, it is. It's my own fault. But no. anyway, so I'm a little burned. But other than that, I'm actually just completely fine. Well, good. Glad glad to hear it. Glad yeah. to hear it. And how are you? Uh, really good. Really good. I'm getting ready for camping season. Mm -hmm. Spring is coming. Yes. It snowed all week, but spring is coming. God damn it. That's, that's how you know spring is coming in Idaho. Mm -hmm. And so we bought a trailer and a small four-wheeler this weekend. Uh, for our son mostly to ride and the trailer for us to put stuff in to haul behind uh -huh. our van for camping. We're so excited. And so tomorrow, awesome. It's so awesome. And tomorrow we're taking our van to the mechanic to get the front end work done because it makes a terrible noise. We <laughs> cannot stand a ride in it until we get it fixed because she's afraid it's going to just fall apart into pieces on the road. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> so we're doing that tomorrow. And then once the van is fixed, man, we are ready to rock and roll this summer awesome and i'm so excited i just want to get the hell out of this house yeah and out of this town yeah <laughs> i'm ready i'm so ready well we almost always camp over easter and it's not looking good for our team mm -hmm. this year it's just I don't know. a little too wet still but yeah maybe we're the not weekend far after or so i mean we're maybe. not that far Mm -mm. we're supposed to have 50 mile an hour winds for the next 24 hours. And, you know, that's actually a good thing this time of year because um, it dries everything out. Mm -hmm. I mean, they suck, but, you know, mm -hmm. having wind that high is crappy, but it is really great for drying things out. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, my second baby was born on March 14th. Right. And that poor little thing, the wind blew so hard in March and April that year, and she didn't mm -hmm. have to go outside. It didn't matter. If the wind blew all day, she cried all day. She yeah. could not take the disruption of the wind like that, you know? And so I always think about this time of year. I'm like, yeah, it's time. It's time for the infernal mm. wind to start. But it does. It dries everything out and finishes melting off the snow. And, you know, so for those reasons, we'll take it. Yes. Yes, we will. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, this is our MMIW case for the week. And that means I am going to present a missing and murdered Indigenous women case to Katie. Mm -hmm. This is a cold read. She doesn't know who I'm talking about. She doesn't know anything about this case. I promise you she has not heard about this case because this case came from the Charlie Project. And when you find a case on the Charlie Project, I got to tell you, it's because it's not showing up anywhere else. Hardly yep. anybody cares about this case. And that's why we want to cover them. Yep. So this is uh, Shakaya. Blue Harding. She went by Blue. And let me tell you a little bit about her. Shakaya did struggle a bit with addiction and some mental health issues. And she was kind of in and out of teen crisis centers and lived on the streets of Billings, Montana. Okay. She was last seen on July 23rd of 2018. She, this was about 4 p.m. and she was walking on Buena Vista Drive in Billings. So somebody saw her there. There's not really a lot of story around what she was doing. Somebody just saw her on the road there walking. Uh -huh. um, 
so what what would happen with Shakaya is that she would check in with her family about once a week. So even though she was living transient, she checked in quite a bit. So they knew where uh -huh. she was and kind of what she was doing. And so it was pretty close to her sister and her mom. And uh -huh. um, so it took them a while to, to you know, do a formal miss missing persons report because she kind of had a history of going missing yeah. for a while and then she'd show back up. Sure. So a month later on so August. So her family was not in Billings, is that correct? Um, kind of in the area, I think, yes. Okay. Kind of in the area. And so on the 20th of August 2018, uh, her mother Tamara went to the Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office and filed the missing persons report. Okay. Because she and uh Tamara and uh Sean A, who was Shakaya's sister had not heard from her for a month and they felt like, okay, this is too long. Too long. This has yeah. taken way too long. So the problem is we don't have any information around her disappearance. All we have is that somebody saw her walking down the road on July 23rd. Uh -huh. Beyond that, we don't know where she went or anything that happened to her. And there's been a very minimal, that's putting it nicely, investigation uh -huh. on her she had a history of drug problems she had been known to trade drugs to trade sex for drugs uh -huh. and so okay. hearing those things like that you know well so i'm going to stop here right there because i i just well no maybe i won't okay. i'm just gonna I, i'm gonna mention trafficking right now because i believe she was trafficked but go ahead and finish and, and okay so the police, you know, in hearing that, were kind of like, eh, she's a drug addict, prostitute. We don't care all that much. I mean, they never said yeah. that. But, but that's always the insinuation. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Her mother, Tamara, has, you know, said that she felt like they just really quit trying very quickly. Mm -hmm. it and she was how old? Uh, 19. Of age. Yeah. Of age. Yeah. Here we go. Have we heard this story before? Mm -hmm. but here is mom and sister there is a facebook page for her and you know it, it hasn't been active her facebook page hasn't been active in a while but there is a facebook page to try to help find her sure and from her family she has family who love her she yeah. has family who are looking for her so According to the Charlie Project, and she is native, by the way. She is yeah. native. Yeah. Well, look how beautiful she is. She's got such a sweet face. She does. Yeah. No. She's a beautiful she's a doll. Woman. Yeah. I'll show you. These are a couple of her uh, missing posters. I'll just bring these up. This is the one that was done by Indian Country. If you know about Indian Country, Indian Country is a, um, it's a publication. Yeah. For and about Native Americans. This is their missing poster for her. Okay. And let's see. I was going to tell you a couple of other things. So she has ties to some other cities. And so this is one question that they've had. Um, she has ties to Fort Riley, Kansas, and to New, Mex New Mexico, as well as Fort Belknap as well, and Billings. Mm, no. But she was living in Billings at the time. There has been no, she was very active on social media. She posted lots and lots of things. And, and in the, from the July 23rd, let's see, we can tell you July 24th is the last day that she posted anything to her Facebook page. And she had been posting because she just had a relationship breakup. Uh -huh. And her last post was all depressing, but I'm typing it like it's everything, but relying on feelings suck. And that was okay. her last Facebook post, but that was on July 24th of 2018. So she was at least available then to post to social media. And she was quite prolific mm -hmm. yeah. on social media. And so, you know, there's a lots of questions about where did she go, you know, right. after this, because then family heard nothing, no one saw her and there was no social media activity after that. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, unless you have any questions, okay, 
No questions. She's shaking her head. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. That's not very yeah. helpful. On the, <laughs> on the podcast. We're going to take a little break. <laughs> and when we get back, we're going to ask Katie to give us a cold read on Shakaya and where she may be. Okay. Okay. So we will be right back. Thanks for joining us. Of course, we are True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters, and we are talking about Shakaya Blue Harding, who went missing in July of 2018. And Katie is going to give us a cold read on this case. What do you think happened to Shakaya, Katie? You know, it's so rare in these cases that I get to say this, but I fully believe that Blue is alive. Okay. I do believe that she was trafficked. I believe she's in Los Angeles. Okay. I feel like what happened was that I, and here's the kicker. I think someone knows that. Mm -hmm. I feel like some of the people that she was partying with and running around with a little bit in Billings kind of connected her to a friend of a friend, you know, that, that, that they partied with that helped connect her with someone who did take her. I feel like there was an offer of ride with us, come here and then we'll bring you back home in a few days, you know, and mm -hmm. I don't feel like she told her family, didn't check in with them on that one because she knew they wouldn't approve of that, you know, and really right. think that was a good idea because she also knew it wasn't a good idea, but mm -hmm. it was this adventure. She was, you know, going to get in the car and basically go road trip with some people. Yeah. And I, uh, they did, they, but they took her, I believe they took her to Los Angeles, California, that that's where she is. Okay. She, I feel like she is, it's one of those type situations where they are keeping young women so inebriated that uh, they don't quite get their bearings, you know, just so addicted and that she is being trafficked in the sex industry. Mm -hmm. With that being said, I am holding a lot of space that at some point um, the, she and the women that she are with are rescued from that. Mm -hmm. And then we can help, you know, that, that they can help her to find her way back home. You know, and again, it's very rare in these cases that I feel like she's actually on this planet, but this girl is. She's yeah. she's alive. Wow. I, I love that because, of course, she has family looking for her and they... Yeah clearly do believe also that she is mm -hmm. alive. There have been mm -hmm. um, so-called sightings of her in several places that always turn out to be not her. Yeah. You know how these things go. I mean, yeah, that kind of thing happens, but they are still actively looking for her. Mm -hmm. so. I do believe she's in the light alive. I believe she's here in the U S I believe she's in the West. I, I don't mm -hmm. feel like she's, you know, gone that far. And, mm -hmm. and it sucks because I feel like she went on, she went, she did, she made the choice under some false pretenses and, mm -hmm. You know, thought she was coming home in a few days, and then that didn't actually happen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wow. Well, you know, that's a great lead. That's well, great so that's lead. the energy that I'm throwing out there is that uh, whoever has trafficked her and the other young women that are with her, because she's not alone, there's a, there's several of them, yeah. that, uh, that there are, you know, law enforcement that are going to crack this one open and, and get these young women safe and get them home to their families. Exactly. Absolutely. Okay. Well, you know, people who may know Shakaya Blue, um, if you listen to this, you know, do some looking in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Look at what connections she might have there. It sounds to me like you might find her there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Thank Fingers you. Crossed. I really you appreciate bet. that because she certainly deserves to be found and deserves to be reunited with her family. She sure does. And they deserve that too. Dang it. Yeah, they most certainly do. Well, guys, this is our first case of the week. As you know, we do three true crime cases, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. 
And then on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Pacific, we will be doing our weekly case update. That is a live stream at 7 p.m. Mountain on our YouTube channel. Yeah. And also on Thursday, we will be doing the Thursday Night Psychic Show, which is also a live stream at 7 p.m. Mountain on our YouTube channel. Yep. And I think, Katie, don't you have a spirit school class this week? I do. I have spirit school on Tuesday. That's mm -hmm. going to be at 1 p.m. Mountain. Oh, and mountain. okay. Mm -hmm, a little earlier. And we're going to be doing some really introductory animal communication. Nice. That's okay. one of my gifts and one of the things that I offer. You know, one to listen and... I've taught a lot, a lot, a lot of classes on this topic. So we're going to start at the beginning and basics and start building from there. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys, we have lots more to come this week, but definitely watch for anything to do with Shakaya Blue Harding. And if you go to that Facebook page, you know, support her family and let's, let's try to help bring her home. Yeah. And you know, we're true crime paranormal with the psychic sisters. Thanks for being here. <laughs>